Ben Aras is editor-in-chief for BNE and Telenews. He joins us live from Berlin. Ben, when you look at these numbers, it really puts the intractability of this in perspective. The border is roughly 1,000 a, a kilometers long. And in 10 years, 10 years' time, they've only agreed on 47 kilometers of that. You would think that both of these sides yeah. would want to do more. Yes, I mean, this problem actually goes all the way back to Stalin. Um, Stalin, when they took over and incorporated Central Asia into the, the Soviet Republic, um, he purposefully cut the borders up in order to separate, keep enclaves of ethnic groups within other countries in order to stop them unifying and um, in order to make sure that they had no sense of, of nationality. And then within the Soviet Union, of course, it was like the EU, it was borderless. I mean, you could travel freely amongst uh, all the different countries. And so a lot of these so-called countries were just names on a piece of paper. However, um, now, the, since 1991, they've become national entities. And the big problem here with Kyrgyzstan Tajik border is that large parts of it are simply not defined. There's no border at all. There's no line. And the uh, the tension between them, and, and Bruce, who was um, commenting before, mentioned water. Water is a key issue in Central Asia because they're running out. Um, and what we're seeing here is a function of that tension rising. And so it leads to clashes. Um, in this case, it seems that a Tajik soldier had wandered over what was supposed to be the border and got shot at and killed by the Kyrgyz. And then the whole thing flared up. And as you said, I mean, this has been going on for 10 years. There was a very nasty clash uh, last year in April when about 55 people were killed. Um, but this one is very serious. This one they're using, you know, heavy arms, guns, right. mortars, tanks, and, and a lot more people. I mean, uh, 150,000 people have, uh, have fled the region uh, on the border between Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan because of the fighting has become so heavy. Yeah, and about 100 people killed in this. I mean, that's not a small number in two days. It is good that there's a ceasefire, but in your view, what's the risk of this flaring up further? I guess we can be relatively assured that Russia's not going to get involved and throw its weight around when it just days ago turned down Armenia in its problems. Uh, but what do you think? Yeah, um, Russia is very unlikely to get involved in so much as, you know, it's uh, all its resources have been thrown into Ukraine. It doesn't have any spare resources. But Russia should get involved in so much as there's um, the CTSO, the, the uh, Collective Security Treaty Organization, which is a sort of Central Asian version of NATO, to which all these countries have signed up. And Russia is the guarantor of that in the same way that the U.S. is the guarantor of NATO. And... Um, it should step in and bring this fighting to an end. As it happened, both um, Japarov, the Kyrgyz president, and Ramon, um, the Tajik uh, president, they were um, they were together. They were sitting together at the weekend um, in That's Samarkand, right. where there was a big Shanghai um, organization. And so they initially agreed um, to a ceasefire, which is now sort of holding, but um, with uh, some some breaks. It's not holding very well. All right. uh, and I think no one wants to go to war, but the Tajiks have gone deep into Kyrgyz territory, um, and mm. they're very heavily armed that with the, with drones, uh, with Pakistani and Iranian weapons and Russian weapons. And so the prospects of this continuing, it's, it's up in the air. We still don't know. It's a very unstable situation. Yeah. All right, Ben. Thanks for shedding more light on this. Appreciate it.